Uh, next, I'd like to demonstrate uh, the process of fluorescence where light gets absorbed at one frequency, for example, uh, ultraviolet, and then gets re-emitted at a different frequency, for example, in the visible part of the spectrum. So we can shine ultraviolet light, uh, for example, on these uh, mineral samples or on these uh, fluorescent uh, liquids. We'll see that they fluoresce when I shine the ultraviolet light on them. And uh, we'll determine that uh, we do get emitted light that's different than the reflected light that we see under the visible illumination. So if we turn the lights down, please. And uh, I'll uh, shine the ultraviolet light on these minerals, and we see that uh, under the ultraviolet light that the minerals give off light that's very much different than the light they give off under direct reflection of, of uh, visible light. And uh, let's look at the light uh, from the uh, shining ultraviolet light on these liquids. Let's look at the uh, chalkboard up here, and we see the, uh, the word fluorescence, even properly spelled there, under the uh, orange uh, fluorescent light and under the uh, bluish green fluorescent light. Again, these, uh, these little specks of chalk and the, the, uh, the uh, chalk, uh, the words on the chalkboard here are illuminated by ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light gets absorbed and gets re-emitted in the visible part of the spectrum. So we see the visible light through the process of fluorescence. Notice I look above that for another word fluorescence, and I don't see it with the ultraviolet light, but if we could have the white lights turned back on again, please. We could then see uh, fluorescence here, and white is reflected by the white light. It doesn't show up under the ultraviolet light but these show up under the ultraviolet light uh, and fluoresce. Again, the process of fluorescence is where light gets absorbed at one frequency and then re-emitted at another frequency. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, phosphorescence. Uh, phosphorescence is where light uh, gets continuously absorbed and uh, then not radiated until sometime later. Uh, we're going to demonstrate that with a little... Uh, uh, ball that I have uh, under cover here. I've kept the light away from it so that when I bring it out into the room, it'll appear to be dark. If we turn the lights down, uh, I've, I'll bring this ball out here and uh, we can't see it because it's not uh, radiating any light. And uh, so I pull the ball out from, from under the towel. And then if we could have the lights in the room again, please. I'm going to shine some light from this light projector onto that ball and uh, let that light get absorbed there from the slide projector. Actually, the lights in the room would work. Ultraviolet light would also work, but uh, to energize those atoms. And so we're kicking those electrons up into higher energy levels, and then we'll see them continuously drop back down again as, uh, as they uh, continue to lose energy. So if we could have the lights down, We'll see if that ball now will glow in the dark. So we've seen that ball that now glows in the dark under the process of phosphorescence where light gets absorbed uh, over a period of time and then radiated out over an even longer period of time. Eventually that will cool off again, not that it's hot, but it'll lose its energy and it will uh, again become uh, uh, dark, phosphorescence.